tlaxo que más te tratas en el Wicca. Te cuento ni mía chica bolisí, o me cuál otro, o me cuál otro nali en tramas chiloyen. Te cuento ni mía que salcoa, mía que escalipoca, huitzilo pochli en chipetote. Y que no chan tlaca, no chan siwa, no chan tlaca pili, no chan siwa pili. Igual te cuento ni mía chica bolisí, y me cuál otro, y que señalisí, y me masat sin señalisí. Tlaxo que más te tratas. Thank the grandfathers and the grandmothers and the ancient ones and all the energies that give us life. I thank um, Ometeo, which uh, represents the, the laws in nature, the cosmic laws that govern everything that exists. I thank, um, of course, the four elements that give us life, the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water, and the generators of life in these, the four corners of the universe, Quetzalcoat, precious knowledge, Tezcalipoca, consciousness and memory, Huitzilopochtli, the will, the internal will, and Chipetote, the capacity to transform. Kenyanotimuika, Newa Masatsin, Newa Setekpat, Iwan Chico Ase Kali Shiwit, Masatsin. My name is Masatsin. I am uh, one flint, six house Masatsin. Born in the year of the house and the day of the flint. And I want to share with you a little bit about my work that I'm doing regarding the Tonal Mashot. My interest and my focus has been what we know as the Tonal Mashot, the original name of the ancient Mexica chronological system, universally known as the Aztec calendar. Um, it's been known, it's been said for many years, and we didn't begin to say it, but that it is the most precise calendar system ever invented by mankind. So being that the case, we thought, well, let's try to find out how it works. Can we use it? Is it good for us today? So in the process of the past 13 years, uh, specifically 13 years ago, we began working on finding the name of the days, finding um, the reason of the 20-day periods. But as we got into it, we learned that there was more to it, that it was um, an, uh, something that is alive. So it is a measurement of time in space. And now we've got to the point where we're using it on a daily basis, where we're applying the, the concepts of the movement of time and the qualities of each piece of time in a day to even curriculum in schools. So we're hoping to be able to present um, a scientific um, evaluation, scientific uh, evidence that this calendar system, that its time has come. So my name, uh, Masatsini, comes from the term Masat Venado. It's a name that was given to me, placed on me approximately also about 13 years ago by one of my elders named Tokli from uh, San Juan Tepenahuac in Chochimilco. And the name Masatsin refers to re a respectable deer, venerable deer, and uh, refers to a messenger of love and peace from the grandfathers. It has to do with using your instincts, your intuition, your agility to give and bring a message across. My, uh, my original name in my calendar system is Setekpat One Flint, because I was born on the day one flint of the 20 day cycle. And the year that I was born is Chikwase Kali, Shiwit, the year six house. The house in a, in a 13 year cycle of years, it comes under the, um, the sign of the flint also. So in a 13 year cycle of the flint, I'm born in the year six house. This gives me, using my calendar year, my calendar day, and even the time that I'm born, and the number that, I, that is applied to me now, one flint, it gives me an, an understanding or a picture of my reason for being, of my, um, my mission in life, even my characteristics. It, it tells me um, my capabilities and my responsibility, more importantly. It also tells me something very important. It tells me that everything that I need to, to accomplish what I need to do on this earth, I have it within myself. It came um, upon me on the day that I was born. On the day that I descended from my mother's womb, on that day that the creating energies that our ancient grandfathers from this continent, I like to call them our grandfathers, nuestros abuelos, uh, on the day that I descended from my mother's womb, on that day, there were certain creative energies available, present. And as I took my first breath of life from Quetzalcoatl, which is Iliot, the breath of life, as I took my first breath of life, certain energies came into me. It was my first breath of life. And that gave me an identity. We call it cosmic identity. It's an identity that uh, allows me to, to get away from other uh, to get away from physical identity, to get away from racial identity, to get away from even religious identity. It's an identity that puts me actually in contact with my environment. 
with my surroundings, and better yet, it gives me a duality of being an individual and part of the cosmos at the same time. So our work has been to try to bring this message of cosmic identity. At the same time, since we're working on the calendar system, we're looking at the days of the sun as they pass every day, keeping track of these days. We are now aware of a particular time in space that we are living in. And being that, we're aware of this time and space, it get, makes us more responsible. At the same time, it gives us an urgency. So we feel an urgency that this message go out to all people, to all young people, to all people of all colors and all nationalities, because regardless of your nationality or place of origin, this calendar system is about you. I think it's real important that we point out that it's not a Mexican thing, it's not an Aztec thing, it's not a Chicano thing, it's not an Indian thing. It's a universal concept of time and space. It's a human experience towards personal transcendence. Uh, where we're able to transcend all barriers that tie us down sometimes. So in the process, uh, we've been very fortunate to meet um, the maestros, the elders, the keepers of the tradition, mainly the oral tradition. And now there's a lot of uh, professors from different universities that have also been undertaking a study of this calendar system. So we've been fortunate to meet the, the people who are on the forefront of the discoveries or rediscoveries of our, of our ways of using the system. So we call it a, a way of teaching, a way of learning. And with that, of course, we, we get more responsibility. Uh, at the present, I'm working uh, to put together into publishing form, published form, um, my study for the past 13 years. And um, it will be based on, on the process of, of using the calendar, from learning the years, the meaning behind the year signs, the symbols on the calendar itself, uh, to learning the 13-day periods that we live in, down to learning the day that you're living in. Because if you don't know the day you're living, you might miss something. You won't be able to appreciate it or take advantage of the qualities that are present for you. And we got it down to hours now. We got it down to a 24-hour period. Um, it's, uh, this 24-hour period I'm talking about is located in what we call the Cores Borgia. We call it Huehuetlatoli, the ancestral word. And in here we find a 24-hour period where it's showing us hour by hour the passing of the day. And like I mentioned earlier, we applied it already in the curriculum, the schools from all levels, from elementary, from kindergarten, uh, junior high, high school. And so we're looking also to apply it at the uh, uh, college university level with the hope that someday we can go and face uh, boards of education throughout the country uh, and present this work to them in a scientific form so they'll be able to accept it and allow us to begin uh, contributing to the education of the young people. We think that by them learning their cultural identity, their cosmic identity, it gives them a true face and a strong heart. It means they get their own identity. Like I said before, regardless of nationality, place of origin, they're part of the whole. And most important, we find that uh, young people today, they, um, unfortunately because of all the, what's going on in the world, what's, um, what's evident on television, on the radio, in the newspaper, all this violence, um, all this you know, chaos going on in the world, the young people are really, really, um, we be, they've been dealt a, 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 bad, a bad hand. And we're trying to um, balance the field by reintroducing them to their inheritance. Now, this is going to be something that I'm going to share with you on this calendar system. That um, it doesn't, uh, like I said, doesn't matter where you come from. This is information that is in your, in your blood, it's in your genes, it's in your veins, it runs in your veins. We're very proud, very honored that we, are, uh, we have descendancies of the grandfathers who created the system. But that only gives us more responsibility. And we need to share it with everybody because uh, we're here to share with everybody the qualities. A long time ago, in the year 1521, the, uh, our young grandfather, Guatemoc, spoke and told the, the invader that was present at that time that you're not ready to begin to understand the treasures that we have. And unfortunately, that metal, the sun sweats that's got you crazy, is keeping you from understanding. After that, he never said another word, but he did leave us a message telling us that one day our sun would shine on us again. And we believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that that time is now and that we are now finally ready to begin to understand. So that's my hope, and I'll, I'll take you into this calendar system now. To us, not only is it a, a beautiful piece of art that reflects the good qualities, artistic qualities of our ancestors, but also it is a message that was left to us, and it's something that we can use on a daily basis. And, and we've been fortunate enough to, 
to have kept this this um, this information. I think it was kept from safekeeping for I mean in safekeeping for a long time, many many years, and to the time was appropriate for it to to come out again. And um, I think necessity is what made the time appropriate. Why? Because we need to have a cosmic identity. We need an identity today, and it's found here. So some of the most important things that I believe uh, this image can show us, can share with us, is I'm going to point out right here. And I want to start out with looking at this face that we have right here. On the face on this calendar, for approximately almost 500 years, we've been told that this is the sun god. And that his tongue is sticking out because it needs to be fed with human blood and sacrifice. And it's been there, and it's been left like that. Even today, they still pass out that kind of information. At the Museum of Anthropology, uh, many anthropologists, ar archaeologists, very, very special people with a lot of study continue to promote this, this concept. And um, for a long time, nobody wanted to touch that subject, but that really makes it a, a touchy subject that people kind of keep away from this culture because of this. It promotes a lot of um, disrespect for, for descendants of this culture. And, and, and as, as the people, young people feel that they're being disrespected in their ancestors as well. And more importantly to me, I have found that the teachings that we've had for almost the past, past 500 years regarding the symbol, this particular symbol here, has caused a lot of problems and unfortunately a lot of, uh, a lot of violence, a lot of death. Bringing that in mind, we, we approached the elders in Mexico City, in different parts of Mexico, in Guerrero, in Jalisco, and uh, with this problem. And we told them that we needed something to, to unite the people again, to bring the people back together to their consciousness. And they explained to us that, that uh, the unifying factor, the common denominator in the universe is this calendar system. So we've taken it uh, as that. And we presented it everywhere to uh, people and uh, students of all nationalities, of all places. Uh, in Mexico, in Mexico, we've been here in, in uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, California. Where we can get to, we present this image and the real meaning behind the symbol. So, if it's not the, the sun, then who is this face here? The face that we have here, it, it is the face of the earth. It's called Tlal Tecutli. It is the guide of the earth. And there's another, another stone also in the Museum of Anthropology with the same face on it. And they call it Tlal Tecutli. And whether they call it the, um, the monster of the earth. And on the other side of the, of the, of the room, the calendar, they call it the sun god. But it's actually the face of the earth, Tlal Tecutli. His tongue that is sticking out here, it doesn't represent um, the need to be fed at all. It's, it's a tongue just like myself, just like my own, for speaking. So the grandfather is speaking to us, bringing us a message. Around, around this face, in these four squares that we have here, these four squares, that all together, they they symbolically paint the image of a, the wings of a butterfly. And this whole image together is called Oli, movement. It's called Nawi Oli, for movement. And these, uh, we have four squares, and each has a number four in it. It's actually a day sign of the jaguar, a day sign number four of the wind, a day sign number four of the rain, in this case it's the rain of fire, and a day sign of number four of the water. So what we have actually represented here or the four elements that give us life. We have the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. The four elements of life. So the grandfather, we call him the grandfather of the earth. The grandfather speaks to us and tells us, if you want to have life, you need to respect the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. So you can have life, harmony in your life. You need to respect the four corners of the universe. The north, the west, the south, and the east. That's his mission that we have here. That's a responsibility that's given to us as human beings to respect these elements and respect these four directions that will give us life. The jaguar representing the earth, they call these the four previous suns. So they call this the son of jaguar, the son of wind, the son of rain, of fire, and the son of water. And this one here, they call it the son of movement. And it also has numbers four, one, two, three, four. So it was interesting to us when we were taught that these were the four elements of life. I think that automatically took it out of a religious context or kind of superstitious context and put it right into a scientific context. It's a question of, of survival by respecting the elements that give us life. Now, around, 
around the days, around the, this image are these squares that represent the days in the calendar. In this calendar system, we have a calendar system that consists of 20 days. 20 days, called Sempo Ali, a count of 20, the first count of 20. They begin right here, at the beginning, on this day here, that we call Sipakli, the day of the crocodile. Then the next day is Eekat, the day of the wind. Kali, the day of the house. Quespali, the lizard. Koat, the serpent. Mikistli, the skull. Masat, the deer. Toshli, the rabbit. At, the water. Isquintli, the dog. Osomatli, the monkey. Malinali, the herb. Akat, the reed. Ocelot, the jaguar. Kwautli, the eagle. Koska Kwautli, the condor. Olin, movement. Tekpat, the flint. Kiawit, the rain. And Chochi, the flower. Sipakli. Eekat, Kali, Kwespali, Koat, Mikistli, Masat, Toshtli, At, Isquintli, Osomatli, Malinali, Akat, Ocelot, Kwautli, Koska Kwautli, Olin, Tekpat, Kiawit, Chochil. This common system and these 20 days always begin with crocodile and where they will always end with flower, Chochil. Above that band of days, we have another band that has a number five inscribed in these little squares. These number five they represent the five movements of Venus around the sun in a period of eight years. Venus, Venus cycles of uh, 584 days apiece. That's what these five represent. And that's why it appears as a morning star, as an evening star, and disappears altogether. So Venus, because it appears on both sides of the Earth, uh, when the sun is coming up, like as it is doing now, as, as the rising star, and as the sun is going down, they call this Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl is precious twin, precious knowledge of the precious twin. So Venus in the morning, we call it Talawis Calpante Kutli, uh, the one that stands in the beginning of the daylight. And in the evening, we call it Cholot Tecutli, the companion of the sun. These images of, of Venus are, are very important as well in that each dot of these five dots would also represent the movements, the cycles of the earth, the moon, and the sun, as well as Venus. A little beyond that circle, we have this other circle that's here, this other ring of symbols that to me I like to refer to them as uh, kernels of corn, grains of corn. There's 10 right here, and there's 11, 12, 13. These 13 symbols, they represent the moons in a year cycle. They represent 13 new moons that rise every year. And oddly enough, or strangely enough, they move 13 degrees a day as well. So we have the symbol of the moon, the symbol of Venus, and the symbol of the Earth. So if this is a sun calendar, where is the sun? That's the question. For 500 years, we were told this was the sun, Tonatiu. And we like that idea, so we consider ourselves children of the sun. We thought that was pretty nice. However, the fact that the sun appeared to be bloodthirsty and wanting your blood, that was not very nice. So we had to say, well, that's Tonatiu, and he gives us light and warmth like a good father. So it didn't make sense that he would also want to eat us up while he's giving us that light and warmth like a good father. It was a few years back that our grandfathers told us where the sun was hidden on this calendar system. In the 70s, two anthropologists came out with the information that this was not the face of the sun, but of the Earth. Even though that information has come out, has been published uh, in many books as well, uh, like I said, even today they still call it the, the sun god. So we're very uh, interested in, in uh, pointing out who this really is, Tlaltecutli. So a few years back, our grandfathers tell us the sun is here, but the sun is hidden. 
It is hidden. For those who don't want to see it, they can't see it. But I believe you want to see it, so. The sun is hidden right here in this beak. This is the beak of an eagle. These are the claws of the eagle. The claws of the eagle. And these are the tail feathers of the eagle. So if you were to cover up this image right here, you would have an image, symbolically, image of the eagle with his wings outspread and his claws and his tail feathers. That is the sun. Superimposed over the shape of a butterfly. And they were both superimposed over the face of the earth. So that is a very, very special and important um, astronomical event that takes place every year without fail on July 26. So on July 26, the sun is directly above Mexico City, Mexico Tenochtitlan, in the zenith every year without fail. And this is what is painted here, what was carved in the original stone 